Hey guys, I recently picked up a GPD XD, which is like a little portable uh, handheld gaming device uh, built on Android, sort of in the form factor of a Nintendo 3DS or more like the Nintendo DS. Uh, considering it's missing a screen here. And one of the things I did is, before I purchased it, I posed the question on our GPDXD of, uh, you know, what's what's the DOSBox performance like? Because there's a few games uh, like Duke Nukem 3D that I would like to run on this, and I just wanted to know how they would actually hold up. Now, it turns out that there were some videos of it that I wasn't able to find in my first few passes when I was looking for that, uh, but none of them were running the emulator uh, that I like to use on Android, which is Magic DOSBox. So I thought I would demonstrate how Magic DOSBox works on the GPDXD. It's certainly a performance boost over the typical DOSBox Turbo, so if you're looking for speed, definitely go with Magic DOSBox, but there's a few other things that benefit it, and I want to go over that in this video. Now I do want to be upfront. I have run the legacy 1.8 gigahertz ROM uh, off of the forum, so you can find it if you just sort of Google GPDXD Legacy. So the performance in this video is based off of a 1.8 gigahertz clocked GPDXD and not the stock 1.4 gigahertz. So if you're watching this video and your performance is not matching mine, that's likely the reason as to why. One more thing that I'd like to note is that the HDMI cable that I'm using to output video to my computer is starting to go bad, so the audio is a little distorted and a little crackly. Just note that this is not the GPDXD and it's simply the HDMI cable going bad on my end. So, Tarion 2000 is a very easy game to get running. It doesn't require too much to actually play. All I did is I told Magic DOSBox where the setup file was, I set it up, and let it do the rest. Uh, as for the controls, I simply mapped the D-pad to be the movement keys. I mapped the B key to be the Enter key, which is how you uh, select anything in the main menu. A is your space button, so the primary fire, and then X and Y are the left bumper attack and the right bumper attack, respectively. Very simple controls, and it works beautifully in this game. Massive Christmas enemy has been detected. Alright, this next game is Ultima 7, which is one of the biggest reasons why I was looking into DOSBox performance, because I know that this game is not the easiest of ones to emulate if you're wanting to do it through DOSBox instead of Exult. Uh, and I am very happy to say that it does work fully in Magic DOS box. This is primarily a keyboard and mouse driven game, so you really do need to have a, a mouse ideally to play this, but there is a way to play it on the GPDXD, and of course Magic DOS box offers some really cool options as well. So the quick way I've done the controls is I use the D-pad for movement, I use the A key as the enter key, uh, the X key toggles combat mode, Y opens up your inventory, and B opens up your stats page. Uh, as for the mouse usage, you can use the left or right joystick to move the cursor on the screen, and I use the trigger keys, L1 and R1, to right click and left click. I've also mapped both R2 and L2 for the hand swapping feature, because Ultima 7 does offer the ability to swap which button does which, depending on if you're left or right-handed. I've always found that to be very easy uh, if you're doing a lot of inventory management to flip which hand you're using to just quickly do a whole bunch of clicking and all that. So, a uh, very nice thing to do there. Uh, finally, I've mapped L3 to the Save button and Start to the Escape button. So you can fully play this game with just the gamepad itself. However, if you have a, a mouse that you can connect, that would be ideal. One final thing that Magic DOSBox does provide is the ability to use the touchscreen as is sort of like a trackpad, almost, but uh, a little bit different than what DOSBox Turbo does if you're used to that. So basically, you can put your finger on the screen, and no matter where the cursor is at the moment, it'll jump to where your finger is, and that is really, really helpful when it comes to managing your inventory, which is basically 50% of this game. Uh, I would almost always recommend at that point, if you were going to play this game, to carry a stylus around with you so that you can easily maneuver and uh, click on those really tiny items to drag around. Um, but if, you know, if you're happy with carrying a stylus with you, Ultima 7 is actually a pretty good experience. It runs very well, actually. I'm quite shocked about it. I have a lot of other emulation machines that just simply can't handle it. Uh, my Raspberry Pi second generation can't handle this. I have an old uh, an iMac uh, G4 that I use for other emulation that, that can do DOSBox perfectly fine, Duke Nukem, all of that really good, 
but it can't do Ultima 7. So I'm quite shocked that the uh, GPDXD has been able to pull off Ultima 7 and pull it off pretty reasonably. Currently, as far as I'm concerned, every facet of the game can be played. Uh, just sort of, you know, would take a little bit longer than if you had a keyboard and mouse lying around instead. Alright, here it is, Duke Nukem. This game works absolutely flawlessly on the GPD XD, so long as you're not pushing the resolution too high. I found that the sweet zone is 320 by 200, but you could possibly go up to 640 by 480 if you turn down some of the other settings, uh, like dynamic shadows, things like that. Now, as for controls, uh, oh man, you're in for a treat when you play this game. Uh, you can use both joysticks, which is the biggest reason why I went with Magic DOSBox over DOSBox Turbo, because in DOSBox Turbo, you can only use the D-pad. True, you can map one of the joysticks to the D-pad as well, but you can't use both joysticks, at least from my experience. So, in this game, I use the left joystick for left and right strafing and moving forward and backwards, and I use the right joystick for turning left and right. I don't actually use the up and down functionality because it doesn't benefit Duke Nukem at all. Uh, basically, when you shoot at an enemy, no matter how high up or down they are, you'll always hit them if they're right in front of you. So, yeah, that's perfect right there. As for the other controls, uh, well, as standard, R1 is the primary fire button, and I use L1 for the quick kick so you can quickly melee someone. Um, I also use the L2 and R2 buttons for the night vision and jetpack upgrades if I ever get those. Um, as for the other buttons here we have the A key which I've mapped to space that lets you go through the user interface and lets you also jump. The B key is what I use for item usage. So when you pick up various items throughout the game like Hollow Duke and med packs things like that you can use the B key to use those. The X key is what I use to crouch, and the Y key is my interact button for when I go up to doors and terminals, things like that. Uh, I also use the D-pad, so left and right on the D-pad cycles through my weapons, up and down cycles through my items. I then use L3 for a quick turnaround, so if I need to turn around real quickly, that's what that's for. There's a full 180 degree turnaround in the game. Uh, finally, start is the escape key, lets me go right back to the main menu. And there's actually still a few buttons left that you could map, like the select button or R3. Um, so you're free to do that if you want. Uh, perfectly up to you at that point in time. But yeah, this game is very, very fun to play. I'll be perfectly honest here, I've never actually beaten the game. So I'm looking forward to just sort of chilling over Christmas break and, uh, and knocking it out. Uh, just sort of taking it off my bucket list here. Without further ado though, here's some uh, gameplay from Duke Nukem. And then I'll end the video on that note. I hope you all enjoyed the video and take care.